<laughs> oh what man! Are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is the husband. The wife. The, the issues. Is. Yes, it is a new year. Woo! I know we are so late, but we have got a lot of updates, got a lot of catching up to do. We do. A lot of apologizing to do. So I will <laughs> let my wife um get into the rules. Yes, yeah, so new year, new season. New me. New me. New me. New us. New us. So uh, the rules are as they always are, though. They have the same rules, hasn't changed. We want you to be engaged. We want you to give those hearts. We want to share with your followers, share with your friends. Yes. We want to keep it positive, inspiring, intelligent dialogue. Yes, we do. We, and want, to, we want to keep going. And we want to give our hearts. Why do we want to give our hearts? Hearts are free. You hearts show are. Love. Free. They show show love. So today's like. topic is well. First of all, I am RTM. Then you can find me on Twitter at Muslims with an S. Love L U V Jesus. Yes, and I am Akila, aka the wife. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. At Axiom Mary Posta. So I'm gonna put the words in the video. Yes, and like our YouTube channel, subscribe, the husband, the wife, the issue, and also check out our website. Thehusbandthewife.com. Thehusbandthewife.com. Everyone should have received a newsletter from us welcoming the new year. As we try to shout out a black business, and we're gonna do a better job at that. Our schedules have been crazy. So first, we want to talk about today's topic. It my topic is relationship goals 2016 to wife her or not. What? Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> and mine is relationship goals. You know, we see a lot of people on social media posting up pictures of, you know, this could be us, but, you know, she playing or whatever. So we want to talk about, you know, relationship goals and what real goals are and not just, you know, yes. taking a picture. We definitely, because this year we started out the year, um, we've been gone um, because my wife went away to see her family in Washington, D.C., but by the grace of God, she is back um thank you thank you while alaikum salam appreciate you tuning in um thank you that you love the show we hope to keep going um this year is this first episode of season two and when we're going to turn up the topics we're just going to keep it real get into the real hardcore issues with us the things that we go through how we can help what we go through and just you know, just keeping it real and uh, keeping it open and keeping it funky in the 2016. So, right, exactly. um, so she was gone uh, for the last two weeks. So I went 16 days without my wife, and it was a whoo boy. Let me tell you, that was the longest 16 days ever. But I held it down because she came home to a nice, clean home that smelled pretty good. Yeah, yeah, she did a great job. Well so done. when she got in, I turned off my cell phone. So you should know what that meant. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Cell phones were off. So we st- I started out my 2016 a little late, but I started out with a bang. <laughs> so, relationship goals, Akilah. Why would couples have them? Are they even important? Do we have any relationship goals? Well, I think um, that having goals for anything is important, and especially once where your marriage or your relationship is important. Because a relationship isn't just a moment. You know, a lot of times when you first get into a relationship, you're all in love with the person and you think the person is really great. But um, you have to do things to keep your love alive. So it's good to have goals. And um, I would say, yeah, we do have some. Yes. I, while at work, I do for self. um, And then I also do a little things on the side. So I decided to write my goals out for the 2016 um so it was great thank you yes welcome back also yes shout out to brother hannibal he also has a show saturday 8 p.m with him and his brother it's a beautiful show i saw five minutes of it uh i want to tune in so i want to shout out brother hannibal if you all can you know follow him and uh check out his show on so oh, sundays. oh, sundays my bad <laughs> sundays at 8 p.m brother hannibal is doing his thing with his brother um as i have some goals and I'm letting my wife do a little bit of talking because I'm going to go and get my relationship goals and come right back. So I'm going to let my wife talk about her goals, what she got. I'll be right back. Where are my goals at? They're right there. On the table. Um, I would definitely say that I have some goals as well. And um, that it's just really important 
to. <laughs> uh, he's, he's looking for the ghost now. But they're really important to have, like, like I said before, to have the things that you want to do, whether it be going out on dates or um, having communication goals on how to speak to um, your spouse or your the person you're in a relationship with. I'm back. And these are my relationship goals. I have 10 of them. I'm going to get into some of them. They may say, why would you tell people your goals? Well, it's not like you can discourage me from accomplishing them because <laughs> I'm already determined to get them done. By the way, these are my goals, not yours. So uh, you can say what you want to say. That's why I tell people. They say you should. Some people say you should tell people your goals. I disagree. I say tell them. Just, just know that they can't discourage them, you know, as long as your mind is made up. So my first relationship goal as a, as a husband, listen more to Akila, my wife, without always jumping to conclusions or cutting her off. How you feel about that one? Well, I thought that was a good communication goal, and I think that's something that we share both ways because um, both of us are very, uh, I would say, intellectual people. So we try to um, think things through and say things, and we can. I know for me, just speaking for myself, I can be so uh, analytical sometimes that I'm trying to come up with the right thing. So sometimes mm-hmm. if our team says something, and I'm like, wait, I would never do it like that, I have a tendency to kind of jump in. And not let him finish. So I think that's a really, um, that's a really good goal. Yeah, I think that's a big goal. Um, communication. Um, people say, I don't care if you've been married 20 plus years. I've seen some married couples, 20 plus years of marriage, and they still are struggling to communicate. Now, of course, there's probably a lot more that can kept them together, but I, communication you is huge. What? And I think that's probably um, one of the biggest things that since we've been married, because I know when we were courting, that was something that we talked about a lot, that we really wanted to communicate properly together. And I think that um, a lot of times you will see people who are married and they just kind of let stuff go. Like, they're just like, oh, that's just him or that's just her. They're just going to be themselves. But they never really deal with it. They sweep it under the rug. And I think that you can have a much better, happier marriage if you took the time to communicate more. I mean, everybody does things differently, but I know just from what I've seen, I wanted to have a different type of marriage than just seeing the people who just kind of sweep things under the rug and things like that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, even as a man, I'm still learning to communicate um, my feelings, how I feel to my wife. So that's why I want to start out to go with listening um, more to my wife. My second goal is to dedicate some day of the week, preferably Friday, to a date night. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> well, I think it's a, I think it's a great goal. Because like I was saying before, you have to keep it exciting. Um, your marriage or your any relationship, really, you have to keep doing the things that made you fall in love and like with the person. Welcome, Dr. Barry. Thank you for joining us. What now? What we're doing is we're going over relationship goals. I literally have 10 relationship goals, and we're going to go over them. I'm going to ask my wife how she feel about them, and we encourage couples to write down goals and um and make it happen. So that's what we're doing. My third goal, hey. each morning, make Fajr prayer with my wife. How do you feel about that goal? Each morning. Now, Fajr prayer starts at 5 o'clock in the morning. Well, I think that... um. Being in prayer, making prayer with especially your spouse is really important. And um, it's interesting that you said Fajr prayer because for people who um, who may or may not understand, it is at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I think that when you sacrifice your bed, I'm asleep, you know, I'm getting my rest, you sacrifice that for God, that um, you're showing what's most important in your life. So when yes. you do that... With your spouse, um, we know a family that prays together stays together. Exactly. Family that prays together stays together. So we wanted, one of the biggest things I personally wanted to keep God out front. And uh, some people are like, wow, you wake up at 5 o'clock to pray? Yes, because God said, you know what? I know sleep is good, but prayer and your sincerity to me is even better. So we do strive. I have a little jingle. I do. My alarm clock goes off by 450 I do my little jingle, let my wife know, hey, who's going to make prayer with me? And uh, we get up and we pray together. Oh, thank you for sharing, Dr. Barry. And then um, we um, sometimes we go back to sleep. Sometimes we get up, you know, get I regret ready. that I woke yeah. up because then she just bothers me the whole morning. Oh, yeah, I'm super hyped in the morning. So if he gets me up, then it's over. 
Fourth goal, be sure to give her a gift or show in an unconventional manner that I love her at least once a month. Aww. Wow. What do you feel about that one? I need your opinion on all of these. <laughs> well, I thought that was really nice. Um, it's funny because when we were going over the love languages, uh, one thing that um, that I thought was really interesting when um, when I was looking at <laughs> when I was looking at the love languages, it talks about how all the languages are important and you have one that's specifically, you know, you. I know for me, my love language is touch. Um, I also like quality time. But, I mean, as a woman, I still love gifts. So. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, now they say studies show that if you write it out and never look at it, you're still 75% more likely to accomplish 75% of your goals. Without even looking at it. So I always take the time every year right now my goal. My next goal, for my marriage goal, base no decision on emotion, apologize when wrong, and be humble if I'm found to be correct. We all know as men, there's no such thing as a man winning. The, is there such thing as a man winning the conversation, the, the argument? Is there, is there such thing? Well, my husband doesn't believe that there's such thing. Yeah, he because think so. women will always find a way to show that they are actually right in the <laughs> comment. This is what I'm learning now, that a woman, no matter what disagreement you have, you as a man is never wrong. You're never right, I mean. You're never right. You're going you're gonna to find something to flip it on you, and now it's on you now. So, is that what I mean? That's what women do. Oh, okay. So if you ain't trying to clean that up, that's what you mean to do. <laughs> see, okay. see how she tried to flip it on me and bring it back on me. Well, so imagine the conversations <laughs> we go through. Uh, see, happy Mr. wife. Mr. Barry no, nah, that's why they say happy wife, happy life. That's true. But you know what? But you know what? Men try so hard. We spend most of our life trying to make women happy, which you can never do. <laughs> that's why men die quicker than women. No, that's why the lifespan it's of men. Actually, it's Wait, shorter. See, I can't let you spread this. No, it's actually been proven that men, see, that's a lot, exactly, that men who are married live longer than men who are single. And yeah, happier. Probably about two years. No, it's way, it's way longer. Oh my goodness, now I wish I would have got the statistics. But see, it's actually not true, what you just said. Men are actually more productive, more happy. <laughs> well, I just gotta teach brother teach. <laughs> so, we, so we, uh... Brother Hannibal, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I think way. all my married brothers can you know can attest to that you know that you know hey okay let's wait till your <laughs> hey it is what it is but all right, keep going. even when we're right even when I'm right I'm going to humble myself and not rub it in her face because you know, I'm just asking to be well, in the wrong he does a pretty good job of that so my next goal <laughs> it is my next goal says it is we and not I or her against me. And this is something I had to learn early on that it's not me versus her. It is actually we. So it's to really embed this philosophy in myself, I wrote it down on my goal. So my goal is to remind myself that it is we, not I or her against me. What do you think about that? Yeah, see, I think that one is really, really important because as a, a society, there's a lot of things that are put up, uh, men versus women, you know, him yeah. versus her, and you have to realize that in your marriage, that when you have a disagreement or an argument or whatever, this friction between y'all, that it's not about I'm right and you're wrong, I'm going to win or you're going to win, because if you do, I'm going to win or you're going to win, somebody has to lose, and you don't want your spouse to always feel like they're losing all the time with you. You, it really should be based on what's best for us, not what's best for me or what's best for him, but what's best for us to do as a couple moving forward. And when you remember that, it's a lot easier to bring your, you know, grievances or your, um, your points to the conversation without feeling like, you know, I have to win this all the time. That was it. The best show to watch while sitting in traffic. Well, wherever you are sitting, thank you for tuning in. And watching us. My next goal is get a daily kiss from a healer. Now, why did I put that down? Well, I love kisses. So, what better goal to reward myself than to say, hey, I'm going to try to get a daily kiss from my wife every day. What do you think about that goal? 
Well, I thought that was very clever because you didn't say give your wife a kiss. You said you're going to get one from her, meaning that you have to do something in order to make that happen. Yeah. So I thought that was actually um, really nice. I know for me, one thing that I always um, kind of really admired about my husband is something that got me is that he would say, you know, I do little things just to make you smile. And I always thought that was really nice. So... When hey. I saw that, I was like, "Oh!" I should write a scope, <laughs> brothers. We have another scope. How to get your girl to smile? You know, hey, you know, have a few few tips for you know, and left in uh, the player closet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> my next goal: take at least one road trip or flight somewhere with Akila this year. I love to travel, and I, uh, you know, I think I'm going to propose to that to my wife. Thank you, sir. Oh, whoa, no! All praises due to God. Whatever uh, inspiration we get from here, all the credit goes to God. So, uh, yeah, if you was inspired, do that. So, um, yeah, these are our marriage goals. Well, goals I wrote down for myself to make myself better in the marriage. Uh, we love to travel. Um, as you know, Natalie Cole died before you've seen the new Saving year. Same as day doesn't count, right? Yes, exactly. same as day doesn't count. That's yeah. just a regular <laughs> travel place. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, life is not guaranteed, and we get so caught up in bills, rent, don't, not saying to neglect those things, but in the true scheme of life, those things do not truly, honestly matter. So you got to take some time oh, and yeah. step out on the dreams and just do something. Yeah, you may, you know, just just do it. Why not? You only get one life. And, um, you know, I, I even had a friend who had, I died this year. So, I mean, car accident. You could be here today, gone today. So I told myself I'm at least once a year, if not more, at least do a road trip with the wife. And uh, cause we both love to travel. Yeah. So yeah. God willing we have a trip to South America planned in March. Um we're going to Brazil. That was the country I, I had Colombia, but we're gonna go to Brazil. So we're in the steps of planning that this is solidifying that trip. Um, God willing. Mm-hmm. Um Peace to our family from Las Vegas, I saw you. Yes, peace to our family from Las Vegas. Uh, my next goal, it says, no children this year, be smart. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Brother Hannibal. Thank you for inviting your followers. So my oh, goal was, man. no children this year, be smart. Why would I not want to have children? Well, um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan actually teaches that when you get married, um, that you should give yourself about two years, because you're still getting to know your partner, your spouse, and... Um, it's funny because now it seems like all of a sudden once we got married, everybody's like, okay, so when the baby's coming? Um, no. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's one of the things we talked about in our relationship that we truly wanted to enjoy each other because just because you married doesn't mean I know everything about her. Right. So I'm still learning who she is and how can I adjust myself to be a better person to compliment her. So if you have a child... You can't. You won't have no time to think to to learn about each other. And I also want to give a shout out to my brother Hannibal again because you know he sat me down. We had some very good deep conversations, and you know he talked about the challenges in his marriage, but with you know with having a child. So I had a child very early. So we thank the honorable minister for giving us that two year notice, that two year you know, because also it's we a period wanted, of adjustment. Yeah, a period of adjustment because I'm still adjusting, and we've been married. Four months now, almost five months. Almost, almost five months, and so I'm still adjusting, learning her. So, and then we want to be able to travel, do some things together, have a show together. So you know, we want to. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was Sorry, gonna brother. stop him, but it was no. Um, I didn't put him out. That's it. He gave some very good advice. So my older, bro- well, he's not older, but from I call brother him my older brother because very wise, um, because his experience and understanding the experience have helped him with his wisdom. <laughs> Our next goal is to read or discuss the teaching with the Kila for at least 30 minutes a day. I think that's something that got us together, so I don't ever want to go off from it. So I told myself, at least 30 minutes, we're going to read together, talk about our faith. What yeah. you think about that? And see, I, that's one of the things, like, I really appreciate the fact that we had the courtship that we did. Even though when we first were recording, it was mostly like a study group session, yeah. but it really was. It was crazy, but it let me see that the um the heart that my husband has for his faith, for what he believes in, that is something that he believes in very firmly. 
um, and strongly very um, at the center of his being. You know, this is part of what makes him who he is. And it's the same for me. So when we discuss those things together and we discuss what we're doing in the community and everything like that, those are really um, the things that bring us closer together. So I know that's important for me as well. Our next goal, we have about seven more minutes. This is only a 30-minute uh, program. Our next goal is to continue the hug and the wife the issues with Tequila, getting at least 500 subscribers this year. So we're on a goal or journey to get at least 500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, we truly appreciate you visit the website. Go down to the bottom, click on the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. And just that fast. And yeah, share it with your friends. Give us some topics. Yes, yes. We uh, there is a there's a string of comments on. You will be surprised. Yeah. That people that we're gonna do a part two to to the to the show. Can Muslims and Christians work together. work together? There are so many people who disagree with Christian and Muslim unity. Yeah, working people together. are going off on that video. Like, on that video, there's a long, string of comments about yeah, that. About so, how we're not able to work together. We don't believe in the same God. It's crazy. So we want to clear up some things because we're all for Christian and Muslim unity. So we're going to have another program. Maybe this Saturday we may talk about that because we need to clear up some misconceptions because we have more in common. First of all, we're brothers and sisters, especially if you're black. You're my, you're my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. So um, that's this not even with the faith. So we're brothers and sisters by nature. So yeah. we want to talk about that. And then my last, the last go is never use the words I can't. That should not be in the vocabulary of a person who believes in God, no matter what name you may call him. There's only one. So my last goal of all my sheets that I have business goals, spiritual goals, is never use the words I can't. Yeah, and I um. I think that's so important, too, because we have to remember sometimes we might feel like a situation is just arduous and just too much. It's just too hard. We're not going to be able to do it. But one thing that I have learned, and my husband has helped me with this as well, is taking things one step at a time and not just looking at something that you want to do and looking at it and saying that's just too big or that's too much. But, you know, breaking it into smaller goals and smaller steps and celebrating the wins. So, um, <laughs> can I play basketball? Yes, I will dunk on Brother Hannibal Savior's Day. Um, I want is big too. Yes, that's another good one. Thank you, Dr. Barry. He's saying another one. I want is big too. I won't. I won't. Excuse me. I won't. Yes, you're right. We won't use those phrases, I won't, because, you know, we have faith. And yeah, there's right. nothing we cannot do. So, um, we all. Oh, my wife is taking up um, sewing. She has sewing. She is taking up sewing. So uh, yeah, I'm getting back on my garments. When my husband first met me, I was wearing a garment that I made. So yeah. So we're we're doing. Remember, we're still boycotting. We're still supporting black businesses. So yes, we, we have just a, supported a black business today. We did today. We supported a black business. My wife did some shopping, and what did you get? I got true laundry detergent. True laundry detergent. What's so special about true laundry detergent? It's black owned. Black owned. That is right. So if you follow her Twitter, I also retweeted the true laundry detergent. It was about what? Eleven bucks? Well, it was seven ninety nine. The shipping was for seventy nine. Yeah, so eleven yeah, bucks. In a purple so we could have went to Walmart and got some for eleven bucks, but instead, you know what? We ordered online and we're gonna get it sent to the house. So we encourage everyone to check out True Laundry um, because that's the only way. Oh, effects of the boycott. We have about four minutes. Some major stores had to close down yeah. and shut down shop. Crazy. Macy's, Finish Line. What was some of the Macy's, Finish Line. There's only a couple of stores. They had to do some cutbacks because... Macy's they, shut down 40 stores. Yeah, though. Macy's shut down 40 stores. There were so many. 35,000 employees lost their jobs. They were so counting on us to target. They were so counting on us at the holidays to get, you know, those extra push, that extra money that we held our dollars. But and then we spent more money with black businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see an increase yeah. in articles about the increase in production of black businesses. So especially in uh, Texas, mm -hmm. um, the one hair business had a hundred percent business increase, increase a hundred percent increase in business. So guess what that does? That means they can hire another black person because 
Black businesses are the second largest employer of black people after the government sector. Yes. So that's right. Wow. I, so there you go. After the government sector, black businesses are the second largest employer of black people. Not even dark. The, not as dark. <laughs> not as dark. Thank you. Thank up you. Up with Jesus, down with Santa. So yes. So it's up with Jesus, down, down with, with Santa, Santa, and that's what it's all about. We have about two minutes left. Any announcements? Well, uh, we already said our black business, so we can support true laundry detergent. Detergent. Everybody needs to wash their clothes, so no yes. excuses. And it's reasonably priced, and what I've heard is it smells good, it feels good, the clothes are clean, they don't use any animal byproducts, um, it's good for sensitive skin, and all of these great things I've heard. And I know I have sensitive skin, so I'm looking forward to this black-owned, black excellence, black excellence. true That's laundry right. detergent. So I feel so good going out. It may cost a little more, as I'm a minister for our country, teaches that supporting black business may cost more, but it will also cost us more to keep the economic power in the hands of our, our enemy. enemy. We stop so feeding we'll stop feeding them. We can create our own jobs, give our own people opportunities. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for the new time. If this is your first time with us, we appreciate your time. Whether or not you don't come back again, we still thank you for the your valuable time. We will catch us next. You catch us Sunday at. Not Saturday. Excuse me. You catch us Saturday at 8, 8 p.m. You catch us Saturday at 8 p.m. Go to our website. Thehusbandthewife.com. Thehusbandthewife.com. Sign up to our newsletter. Um, you get a welcome email, and we're gonna do it. Also, check out Brother Hannibal Sunday at 8 p.m. Check out his show. How do you subscribe? Great question. Visit thehusbandthewife.com. Go all the way down to the bottom of the page, press the little subscribe button, and you're done. So we want to thank you all for your time again. It is exactly 8.29. We have about a minute left. Unless you have questions, remember, fly high. Or get flown over. Or get flown over. We are out. It is a wrap. Until then, stay blessed. Do something special for your wife or husband. Yeah. And do something special for yourself, too. Yeah, do something special for you. It's 2016. Why not? Increase the peace. All right. Peace, family.